So I've actually got another video for you today on outlet safety, and it's another lessons learned. So I hope that for your benefit and everybody else's benefit at my expense for the issue that happened at my house, I'm sharing this open book transparency so that this doesn't happen to you. As you probably recall, we had an issue with our NEMA 1450 outlet, and this can happen. Unfortunately, it was due to an outlet that was not made. The receptacle itself was not made for that kind of an application. So it failed over time and actually have the same exact situation happening now, but this time it's on a standard wall outlet. This 120 volt outlet, actually started to melt and I was organizing the garage and moving some things around and that's when I unplugged my mobile connector and realized oh my gosh this thing is about to fail. So I have pulled everything off of the wall, I've removed the outlet and I'm going to show you this because this is something I wouldn't have even thought to look at nor would an average consumer nor should an average consumer think twice about something like this. And it's kind of concerning because when you think about it from a code perspective, who is thinking about this outlet in their garage not being up to the task? We've lived here for one year. It's a brand new house. So this outlet is about a year old and unfortunately it failed. It's just not made for this application. This is something that I didn't even know I needed to look into. And this is after the fact of having a failure on a 1450 outlet. So I hope that you'll stick around for this video because I've got a solution here, but I want to show you what happened and what could have happened in this pretty scary situation that even I didn't think twice about. Okay, so to kick things off, I want to show you something. So mobile connector, just like this, this is what used to come with your Tesla. Now you have to select and pay for this to be included, but um, it used to only come with just a standard 120 15 amp outlet plug receptacle on this thing. And this adapter used to be the only thing. So if you wanted to charge any faster than that, you'd have to buy one of the other adapters like a 1450 or you have it. They've, they've got a good number of different options available. But this, what's nice about this is everywhere in the country you go, you're going to be able to find a standard 120 outlet whether it's 15 or 20 amp outlet. So this is the actual plug that was in the wall. And as you can see, there's nothing really majorly happening here. It doesn't even look like anything has occurred, no major signs of heat. And you can also see um, the lack of wear. And that is because this thing was plugged in and it was left. It was not unplugged multiple times. It wasn't continuously plugged and unplugged. This was plugged in and left there. So the reason why we use the mobile connector is we actually use this setup just to have the ability to have a charger be able to reach out to the driveway. So sometimes we plug in a car there, but when you're using a 120 volt outlet like this, you're using it for many, many hours at a time. So example, if you're, you know, 20% or so you're trying to charge, it's going to show 24 hours plus on the screen. So it's going to be more than 24 hours. It can't calculate any longer than that on uh, this plug. So it's going to be charging for more than an entire day when it's plugged in like this. So yeah, it makes sense. That's going to generate some heat over time. It's a lot of load requirement, but understand this, this is a 15 amp outlet. The mobile connector will not allow you to pull more than 12 amps as it's set up here. So I was never pulling more than 12 amps. And because of the way that this shelf is set up, the top outlet is actually completely blocked. I can't even plug anything into that top outlet, even if I wanted to. One thing plugged in here, the mobile connector, that's it. It's the only thing that's ever been plugged into this outlet. And furthermore, this is a dedicated line, which I'll show you the panel behind me here in a moment because this is a 15 amp outlet and it's set up on a 20 amp breaker. Now the good news is this, you can't really see it very well, but this is yellow Romex. This is 12 gauge wire. We're good, we're safe for 20 amps, but this is the only outlet on that entire run. So what I've done is I went out and I got an industrial grade outlet. So this is a 20 amp industrial grade outlet. This is extra heavy duty industrial grade, something like that. Um, it does meet all the certifications, but the first thing that you'll notice, they actually use brass. You can also see, so the thickness is the same, but this actual plastic material. If you recall our 1450, our Hubble outlet that we installed, 
This is a very, very similar material, if not the same, versus this uh, plastic, which you can very clearly tell a pretty big difference in these two materials, probably even on camera. Um, this is very cheap stuff, this is not. So this, what that's gonna be able to do is it's going to be able to take a lot more heat before something catastrophic were to happen. And my understanding is the heat rating on this, although I won't say what it is out loud, I believe it is well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit at a continuous load. So this thing actually, if I'm not mistaken, can also take 150% of its capacity without a major failure. So there's a lot of benefits to an industrial grade and the cost difference between this and this is about $4. This is about a dollar. Actually, the way that the contractors get them, they buy them like a hundred at a time. They're probably like 70 cents for one of these outlets. Going up to a 20 amp and an industrial grade, this was about $5 um, to get this particular one. So it's not a huge like break the bank kind of thing. And again, this is a 20 amp. So even at a 15 amp level, you would uh, be even cheaper than that. They're not terribly expensive, but the problem is contractors are putting in some of the cheapest stuff possible out there um, because they can. There's nobody stopping them from doing that. And there's probably some eyes that need to be on that to see, is this really a safe thing to be doing while we are advancing electrification across the US? So anyways, enough of that. The point is, if you are using a mobile connector, even just a 120, this can happen. My house is one year old house and this still happened. This outlet is only one year old and it still happened. Please take this stuff seriously. Go check what you have out there. If it does not appear like this in some way, shape or form, it's not an industrial grade. If it looks a lot like this, this is like the cheapest basic stuff you can possibly get. So if you're going to be using that outlet for a continuous load like an electric car from time to time, it's worth the five bucks to go out and get something that's much more suited for that application. Obviously installing these is super easy. It's very straightforward. You're gonna put your neutral on the silver tabs here. Your ground goes on the green and then on the brass side is your black wire. So that's how you wire these up. This is a single outlet on this run. There's no other outlets. So I'm only going to have one set of wires or three total wires in the wall, which you can see behind me that will attach to this and that is it. And we'll put everything back together. The other thing that's crazy about this year is I got this inch pound torque driver and I cannot tell you how many times I've used this already this year. It's something I never really paid attention to or cared about, but I've used this a lot now. So I'm glad I have it. It's not that terribly expensive, but these, the spec is 14 inch pounds. So we're gonna wanna set this to 14 inch pounds and make sure that we get the right torque on those. And then they always suggest after uh, two or four weeks to go back and check, make sure that they're still tight. So here's another concern. So um, let me see if I can first show you in here. So there you go. There's a clear picture of the yellow. This is Romex. This is a 12 gauge wire. So we are good there. It is sized properly for a 20 amp run, but you can see the discoloration here and that is heat. It really went pretty far back. I didn't really necessarily pay a ton of attention to how tight those were onto the outlet, uh, but they did appear firm. It didn't feel loose on the back, so it doesn't feel like it was like an arcing event or something like that. This is just heat, and the outlet was working when um, I shut everything off. So no other major signs back here, but you can see just how far back this discoloration goes. It goes way back here. So that heat was an issue. This was probably... Um, you know, right up against the back of the outlet, which the back of the outlet doesn't really show any major signs, but all that heat was just kind of trapped in this area and um, really was starting to essentially melt from the inside with that heat on this wire. Now looking over at my panel, I do have square D panel. It's, this is the line right here, it's 21 amp, and all of my breakers do have built-in GFCI, which is good. And then over here we can see uh, panel slot number 21, garage outlet dedicated. So this is a 20 amp dedicated line to just this outlet. And we do have the proper wire size. Everything's good except for the fact that we have this 15 amp outlet. Okay, now that we have cleared all that up, 12 gauge wire, 20 amp breaker, basically set up for 20 amps, 15 amp outlet. 
My understanding is the code says this. You can put a 15 amp receptacle on a 20 amp circuit if it is indeed a duplex outlet, which this is a duplex outlet. So we should be technically in code, but this uh, did not work out so well. I don't know that it really would have mattered if this was a 20 amp basic outlet because uh, it was never pulling more than 12 amps. Now that is technically towards the limit on 20% of 15 amps, but this just didn't work out. And I don't know that a 20 amp basic outlet would work out either. Doesn't matter, we're going with industrial grade now and this should have no issues taking care of any needs that we will have on this outlet. can turn the breaker back on and we can test the outlet. So just for test purposes, I am going to just use a rechargeable battery, plug it in. Everything looks good. So that's it for this video. And if you have not already, I implore you, please take a look at your outlets, whatever you're charging your electric car with, whether it's a Tesla or any other EV, make sure that your equipment is up to the job. Now, of course, directly wiring these into the panel, like I have over here, I have two of them wired up. That is obviously the safest, the best solution here for every other situation where you may not be able to do that or you need a secondary charger or you're traveling and just wanna use this, make sure that your equipment is up to snuff. So with that, I hope this video was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed this and please be safe out there. I will catch you on the next one.